You've probably heard that cinnamon can lower blood sugar levels, but is that really true? Stay tuned, because today I'm diving into the science and revealing the truth behind if cinnamon can truly help improve your blood sugar levels. Hey guys, Erin here with Healthy Mom Happy Family, and I'm so excited to have you join me here today for a topic that I really love, cinnamon and blood sugar. Because if you've been working to improve your blood sugar levels or if you have diabetes, you have probably heard someone tell you that cinnamon can help. And many people really do swear by using cinnamon to manage blood sugar levels. But today I wanted to look into it a little further and figure out if cinnamon actually does help blood sugar or if really it's just a myth. So in today's video, I am diving into the science and I'm gonna share with you the truth. Does cinnamon truly help reduce blood sugar levels and how does it work? Now, before we get started, I just wanna remind you, if you love today's video, if you wanna learn more about managing type two diabetes and tricks and tips and recipes, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss a new video. Okay, so let's dive in. You know, I think all of us are aware of what cinnamon is, right? It's a flavorful spice, it can be added to so many recipes and foods and even drinks. But let's talk a little bit more about the health benefits of cinnamon. Can having a little bit of cinnamon, you know, a pinch here or a pinch there, can it really improve your health? Today we're gonna find out. So cinnamon has been linked with improving blood sugar levels and improving diabetes management for a really long time. And there's a good reason for that. Cinnamon has been shown to reduce blood sugar levels and fight diabetes basically by imitating the effects of insulin. Now insulin, remember, is that hormone that transports sugar or glucose into our cells for energy. So with cinnamon, it's actually been shown to increase that glucose transport. So it helps to take the glucose out of the bloodstream and move it into the cells where it can be used for energy in the same way that insulin does. Now there's another benefit too. Cinnamon has been shown to increase insulin sensitivity in cells. Now what this means is that it's helping cells be more accepting of insulin. It allows insulin to enter the cells and carry the glucose with it, which means there's less glucose in your bloodstream and more in your cells for energy. And remember, when it comes to type two diabetes, generally this occurs because there's a result of cells becoming more insulin resistant. And what that means is really the cells won't let insulin in. And so if insulin's carrying the blood sugar out of the bloodstream, kind of bring it into the cells, but the cells won't let it in, it's forcing that sugar back into the bloodstream where it starts to rise. So cinnamon helps to reduce this because it's reducing insulin resistance. It's letting those cells be more sensitive to insulin, letting the insulin in, and with it, removing that excess sugar from the bloodstream. Now studies have also found that cinnamon can lower fasting blood sugar levels, and those are the glucose levels in the morning when you wake up after a night of not eating, right? That's your fasting blood sugar. It's also been shown that cinnamon can actually reduce blood sugar levels after eating. When it's added to a meal, it seems that you get less of a spike in blood sugar after. Now, how this happens is a bit of a source of debate. Um, some researchers think that cinnamon can actually slow down the rate that food empties out of the stomach. So basically, if we're delaying that gastric emptying and digestion is slowed, glucose is entering the bloodstream more slowly. So you get more of a muted response versus a rapid spike and crash. Now, other studies seem to indicate that cinnamon may actually block a certain digestive enzyme that breaks down starches and converts them into sugars. So how cinnamon does this is still up for debate and more research is needed, but it does seem clearer based on the research that when we add cinnamon to a meal, it can help to reduce sugar levels after the meal and can also help with insulin sensitivity and fasting blood sugar levels in the morning. Now another great benefit of cinnamon is the impact it can have on heart health. Um, people who have diabetes, they're actually twice as likely to suffer from heart disease as people without diabetes. So this is really, really great news because it seems that when we add cinnamon to the diet, it can help to benefit heart health by improving cholesterol levels and may even potentially help with blood pressure levels. In people with type 2 diabetes, cinnamon was found to lower the unhealthy LDL cholesterol levels and triglyceride levels while it helped to raise those healthy HDL cholesterol levels, the ones that are more protective to the heart. On top of that, regular consumption of cinnamon has been found to reduce blood pressure levels. So if we're bringing blood pressure levels to normal, we're improving cholesterol, those two things help to make our heart healthier and reduce the risk of heart disease. 
So as you can see, cinnamon can offer a variety of health benefits when it comes to managing blood sugar levels and diabetes. But I'm sure you're wondering, how much cinnamon should you really take? Now, when we look at the research, a lot of studies have tested different amounts of cinnamon. And usually they look anywhere between one to six grams of cinnamon a day as a supplement or powdered added to food. Now, to put that in perspective, about five grams of cinnamon is pretty much the same thing as one teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, there was one study that was pretty interesting, and they looked at taking one gram of cinnamon, three grams of cinnamon, or six grams of cinnamon, and the impact it had on blood sugar levels. And they found that all three doses helped to reduce blood sugar levels. So that really can indicate that the smaller dose may be just as effective as having the larger dose. Okay, so there's something really important though I want you to understand about cinnamon. Not all cinnamon is the same. There's basically two forms of cinnamon. There's a cinnamon called Ceylon cinnamon, and there's a cinnamon called cassia. And the cassia is the more common, less expensive form of cinnamon. So when you're going to the grocery store, you're looking in the spice aisle, this is usually the one you find. Now the Ceylon cinnamon, on the other hand, is what's a lot of times called true cinnamon. It's more expensive, it's a little harder to find, but it also seems to be a bit more effective when it comes to those health benefits. So when we think about what's the difference between these two forms, um, we have to look at where cinnamon comes from, right? Okay, so cinnamon comes from the bark of the cinnamon trees, okay? It's a little hard to say, but that's where it comes from. Now, there's a couple of varieties of these trees. So the cassia cinnamon can come from multiple species of these trees. But when we look at the salon cinnamon, it only comes from one specific type of tree. It's the cinnamon vermin tree. Okay, so that's where we get this one specific type of cinnamon. Now, it is less common because it's only coming from one tree, so it can be a little harder to find, and it typically costs a little bit more. But the benefits are that it has a much higher level of antioxidants. And because of it, that type of cinnamon may offer greater health benefits. Now, I don't want you to panic and think, oh, I can't find the cinnamon and I can't get the benefits. Actually, a lot of the studies done on cinnamon, especially the human studies, have used the more common form. So you can still gain the benefits of cinnamon by using the more common form, the less expensive form. But I do want you to know that you still have to be cautious with cinnamon and especially being cautious with how much you take. All right, so I know I talked a lot about the health benefits of cinnamon, but there is a potential downside. Okay, so when we look at that more common form of cinnamon, there's two potential downsides. So one, it does contain antioxidants, but the levels are a little bit lower than what's found in the salon cinnamon. In addition, this form of cinnamon tends to be higher in a compound that is known as coumarin. And this substance is, it's really found in a lot of plants. But what's important to note is that when you take in high levels of this substance, it's been found in animal studies to potentially have a toxic, toxic impact on the liver. Okay, now that's in animal studies, but it could potentially do the same things to humans. So if we have high levels of this compound in our diet because we're taking too large of a dose of cinnamon supplementation, this could potentially have a negative impact on the liver. And that's why consuming high levels of cassia cinnamon is not recommended. Now there's one other factor I want you to consider with cinnamon is that we talked about the benefit that it can lower blood sugar, and that's great. But if you are already taking a medication to lower blood sugar, or if you're taking insulin, when you combine the power of cinnamon, which we said mimics a bit of the insulin response, it could potentially put you at risk for hypoglycemia or low blood sugar levels. And those could potentially be very dangerous and there's even a chance of low blood sugar being life-threatening. So it's really important for these reasons that I highly recommend you never take cinnamon as a supplement until you discuss it with your diabetes care team, your physician, and your dietitian. They can look at your medications, they can look at your blood sugar management, your diet, and really help you to determine if cinnamon supplementation is right for you and what the correct dose and the correct form is for you as well. Okay, so if you're wondering what the bottom line is on cinnamon, here's the deal. Research does show that adding cinnamon to your diet may improve blood glucose levels, which is great news if you're trying to manage them and if you have diabetes. It may also help to promote heart health. Again, those are great, great news for anybody that's suffering from diabetes or just wants to improve health. But there are those potential negative side effects, too low blood sugar, as well as the high levels of Camorin, which is found in the cassia cinnamon. 
So if you wanna try adding cinnamon to your diet to improve blood sugar levels and to improve heart health, I want you to always, and I mentioned this before, but it's important to mention again, discuss this with your physician and dietitian first to determine if it's right for you, what the most effective dose level is, and the type. And I do want you, if you do consider supplementing with cinnamon, consider choosing the salon form over the cassia form because you have less of that compound Camorin and that could be potentially better for health. All right, so that's the bottom line on cinnamon, but I wanna hear from you. So comment below and let me know, have you used cinnamon to help manage blood sugar levels? And if you have, did you notice a benefit? Or what questions do you have about cinnamon supplementation? Ask below and I'd be happy to help. And don't forget, if you liked today's video, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss new tips, tricks, and recipes. Thanks for joining me.